On the afternoon of June 8th, 1940, the British aircraft carrier HMS Glorious was steaming west across the Norwegian Sea, having evacuated aircraft from northern Norway. It was a clear summer afternoon, but Glorious had no combat air patrol airborne, and only a small escort of the destroyers Ardent and Acasta. Suddenly, the German battleship Scharnhorst and Gneisenau appeared on the horizon and opened fire. As Glorious turned away and tried to scramble aircraft, it fell to Acasta and Ardent to mount a desperate battle against overwhelming odds. By the start of June 1940, the Allied situation in northern Norway was actually improving. Though most of the country was now in German hands, the critical iron ore port of Narvik had finally been recaptured, and Allied troops had the German force in the region on the ropes. But catastrophic events in France undermined this progress, leading the British to decide to evacuate their troops from Norway to concentrate resources closer to home. A major naval operation codenamed Operation Alphabet was launched, with the task of taking 25,000 Allied troops off from Norway and transporting them hundreds of miles back to the UK. Two separate troop convoys would depart from Harstad, and a third made up of cargo ships carrying stores and equipment. Another part of the operation involved the extraction of aircraft from Bardafoss airfield, where RAF planes had been contesting the skies over northern Norway. HMS Glorious's role was to act as an aircraft ferry, with RAF gladiators and hurricanes from 4 6 Squadron flying on board. By June 8th, Glorious was anchored at Harstad with other ships that would form the second troop convoy departing Norway the following day. But at 3.53am, Glorious requested and got permission to proceed home early, with just the destroyers Ardent and Acasta for company. The exact reasons for this departure are contested, but there is strong evidence that it was so the captain of Glorious, Guy Doily Hughes, could rush home and court-martial one of his subordinates with which he had fallen out. Departing Harstad, the Glorious hurried west, unaware that lurking ahead of it were two German battleships, which had managed to reach the main Allied area of operations without being detected. By early June, it had been two months since Scharnhorst and Gneisenau had been seen at sea, and the British had become complacent about the risk they could pose. Glorious and other large ships had made repeated crossings from Scotland to Norway and back over the last two months with very thin escorts. The German ships were under the command of Admiral Wilhelm Marshall, and had been joined in their operations by the cruiser Admiral Hipper and several destroyers, but these had been dispatched to Trondheim to refuel, leaving the two battleships to push north combing Allied shipping lanes for signs of targets to attack. It was a bright, warm and exceptionally clear June afternoon. At 4.45pm, midshipman Siegfried Goss, high in the crow's nest of Scharnhorst, saw a puff of smoke on the horizon far to the east. This was HMS Glorious, which without any lookouts posted to its own crow's nest, and with no combat air patrol in effect, did not spot the German ships for another 15 minutes, during which time it continued to steam west towards them. When unidentified ships did finally appear on the horizon, Captain Doily Hughes ordered Swordfish to be ranged onto the deck as quickly as possible and instructed Ardent to close on the unknown contacts and establish their identity. He then turned Glorious to the south to try and buy some time to figure out what he had run into. Before we get further into the action, I'd like to thank the paid partner of this video, BetterHelp. YouTube can be a tricky business. It's relentless, with extreme highs and lows and a constant, grinding pressure to release more and more content faster and faster. Over time, this takes a mental toll, and I've been as guilty as anyone in trying to push through times of stress and cope in unhealthy ways. I'm willing to bet that many of you will have moments of stress or anxiety in your own lives that you struggle with. And the solution isn't to ignore it, which is what I've done too often. This is where today's paid partner, BetterHelp, comes in. BetterHelp offers an effective approach to dealing with these emotions that's been used by more than 4 million people. Here's how it works. You go to their site, betterhelp.com slash historiograph, and answer a few questions. BetterHelp then matches you with a credentialed therapist who specializes in what you're struggling with, and they do this in most cases within 48 hours or less. 
Therapy isn't just for clinical mental health issues. It's for anyone who wants to understand themselves better, develop coping strategies, and plan for a better life. BetterHelp lets you talk to a professional who has years of experience in helping people with similar struggles to you. And the best part, you can do it all from your phone or computer, through phone calls, video chat, or messaging. Using my link, betterhelp.com slash historograph, you can get 10% off your first month. Remember, taking care of your mental health is just as important as taking care of everything else. BetterHelp can be a great start in that direction. By 525, the German ships were heading southeast and had spotted the charging HMS Ardent. Gneisenau and then Scharnhorst soon opened fire on the destroyer with their 5.9-inch secondary armament. As shells splashed around, Lieutenant Commander John Barker turned his ship southwards and began to make smoke, trying to obscure the battleship's view of Glorious. But he could not make enough quickly to fully block the Germans' view, and at 5.32pm, Scharnhorst opened fire with its main 11-inch guns at Glorious. The accuracy was textbook. The first salvo fell slightly short, the second straddled, and the third at 538 scored a hit on the aft of the flight deck at a range of 26,500 yards, one of the longest range naval gun hits on a moving target in history. The shell smashed through the flight deck and exploded in the upper hangar, starting a raging fire amongst the parked hurricanes. As Glorious's crew fought to bring this blaze under control, to the north, Lieutenant Commander Barker and his crew were hanging on amid heavy fire from the German ships, weaving, laying smoke and firing away with their hopelessly outranged 4.7-inch guns. Gneisenau's Captain Netzban said after the battle, the conduct of the Ardent was particularly spirited and clever. She made the task of our guns very difficult. But eventually, weight of fire told, and at 5.42, Ardent suffered a bad hit amidships that started a fire and cut her speed. The German battleships pushed on, with Gneiser now, now pulling across Scharnhorst bow to take the lead as Admiral Marshall's flagship struggled with an engine problem. This allowed Gneiser now to open fire on Glorious for the first time, which was barely visible behind a curtain of smoke being laid by a caster and from Glorious's own fire. The shells were inaccurate, giving the crew of Glorious time to evacuate the blazing hangar and seal it off. Glorious now shifted again to port, steering directly away from the German ships as fast as it could, and Glorious was a fast ship, able to make up to 30 knots. At this stage, there was still a chance that if the smokescreens held long enough for Glorious to get to top speed and put some distance between it and the German ships, it could escape. HMS Ardent was determined to do her part to make this a reality. Her crew launched torpedoes at 547 while steaming at the best speed they could for the smokescreen left by Acasta and Glorious to its south. The German battleships pursued, with Scharnhorst able to resume sporadic fire on Glorious at 550 as it appeared through the smoke, which was being blown eastwards by the wind. Gneisenau now followed suit a few minutes later and at 5.56 a second hit was scored on Glorious, this time striking the aircraft carrier's superstructure and demolishing the bridge in a colossal explosion. Almost every officer there was killed instantly, including Captain Doyley Hughes. Remarkably, the steering station directly below the bridge survived, although able seaman Bill Pascoe was now steering the ship from a new open-air position. With the death of the captain, Commander Arthur Lovell now commanded Glorious from his position in the lower conning tower deep within the ship. In the confusion after the hit on the bridge, a panicky call for abandoned ship went around, but Lovell countermanded it. He was not ready to give up on his ship just yet. He would have been delighted when at 5.58, smoke from Ocasta and again from Glorious itself became too thick for the Germans to see the carrier. But as Glorious got a bit of respite, to the north, time was running out for HMS Ardent, as the smoke hiding it thinned and Gneisenau now quickly again opened fire. Already damaged and with no chance of escape, Lieutenant Commander Barker decided to fight it out and give Glorious and Acasta as much time as possible to escape. Ardent swung towards its attackers, guns blazing. A hit was scored on Scharnhorst before torpedoes were launched forcing the German battleship to alter course to avoid them at 6.06pm. But for this attempt to disrupt the German advance, Ardent paid a swift 
and terrible price. It was hammered by gunfire from both battleships, smashing its upper works and leaving it listing heavily and out of the fight by 6.11. Ardent would go on to capsize and sink 14 minutes later, with the loss of almost everybody on board. Meanwhile, the smoke to the south had now cleared slightly, allowing Gneiser now to fire again at Glorious, until a caster doubled back to patch up a hole in the smoke screen at 6.15. But with the wind pushing the smoke away relentlessly, a caster was fighting a losing battle and could not stop another gap opening up a few minutes later, through which a salvo from Sharnhorse came at 6.20, slamming deep into the side of Glorious amidships, smashing boilers, engine machinery, and allowing seawater to rush in. Glorious shuddered, began to rapidly lose speed, and started to list. The aircraft carrier lurched around to the east, and it was soon obvious to the captain of HMS Acasta, Commander Charles Glassford, that it was going to sink. Now alone, with no hope of getting Glorious to safety and with little prospect of saving itself, Commander Glassford decided that like Ardent before them, like Glowworm two months earlier, and like destroyers of all nations throughout World War II, HMS Acasta would fight to the end against impossible odds. He spoke over the intercom to his crew. You may think we are running away from the enemy. We are not. Our chummy ship has sunk. The Glorious is sinking. The least we can do is make a show. Good luck to you all. With that, Acasta turned hard to starboard and burst out of the smoke that had been cloaking them. Ahead of them were both German battleships, closer than ever before. Gneiser now quickly opened fire as a caster charged guns blazing and launched a salvo of torpedoes from its starboard side at 6.29. It took a while for the German gunners to find their range, but as a caster steamed around to line up a torpedo salvo to port, it took two serious hits, damaging the engine room and killing all but one of the crew on the aft torpedo tubes. Leading hand Nick Carter was the only survivor, and after being briefly knocked unconscious, he was able to recover and fire the remaining torpedoes from this position at around 6.33pm. As the caster came under devastating fire from both battleships, the torpedoes streaked north and into the path of Scharnhorst. At 6.39, one struck the battleship near the stern and the resulting explosion put its rear turret out of action, killed 48 men, and opened a hole below the waterline that invited two and a half thousand tons of water in. Sharnhor's speed dropped rapidly to 20 knots and it began to list. It was an attack that Acasta quickly paid the price for. By 7pm, the destroyer had been badly mauled and was steadily coming to a halt, burning and listing amid a withering barrage on the 5.9 inch secondary guns of both German ships. Even as it finally came to a halt, Acasta's own smaller guns continued to fire away, actually scoring a hit on Scharnhorst as it drew in closer, before finally being silenced permanently at 7.10pm. On Acasta, the crew abandoned ship. Leading seaman Carter remembered seeing Commander Glasford leaning over the bridge, take a cigarette from the case and light it. We shouted to him to come on our raft, he waved, goodbye and good luck. A ridiculous end to a gallant man. HMS Acasta finally sank at around 7.17, joining Glorious and Ardent at the bottom. Across the three ships, 1,519 sailors were lost, with 35 eventually pulled from the water by the Norwegian civilian vessel Borgund after a 56-hour ordeal on life rafts. It was a disastrous engagement for the British, but only a qualified success for the Germans due to the damage Acasta had caused Scharnhorst. This was so serious that rather than continue their hunt for Allied convoys, Admiral Marshall had no choice but to take his damaged flagship to Trondheim for repairs. The second Allied troop convoy, containing 10,000 evacuated servicemen, sailed right through, without any interception. Without Acasta's torpedo, this may well have not been the case. Now, this is often the point in the video where I tell you that the captains of Acasta and Ardent received Victoria Crosses for their and their crew's gallantry in trying to protect Glorious and fighting to the end against completely hopeless odds. Indeed, two other destroyer captains had already received Britain's highest gallantry award for action in the Norway campaign in videos we've covered. But in this case, Glasford and Barker were only mentioned in dispatches in August 1940. With very few British survivors and the loss of any records on the British side which could tell us about the course of the battle, 
The information the Admiralty had was very limited during the war, and despite post-war calls for posthumous awards to be made, nothing has been forthcoming. With the long-running controversy over exactly how Glorious came to be in this position to be taken so completely by surprise, the actions of Ardent and Acasta have not really received the central attention they deserved. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.